Okay, let's take a look at Skittles. This was intended to be in the middle as far as difficulty uh, on the competition and let's just dive right in and look at the description. Okay, so the basic idea of this problem is that Megan likes eating Skittles in batches containing one Skittle of each color. So she likes eating a handful of uh, containing one green, yellow, orange, red, and purple Skittle together in one handful. Most of the time though, uh, the bags of Skittles that she gets do not have the same number of each Skittle flavor. So in this case, she'll try and eat as many with all five flavors as possible, and then as many with the all four flavors, etc., until all the Skittles are gone. So this example kind of describes what this looks like. For this example, we have six green Skittles, two orange Skittles, two purple Skittles, two red ones, and three yellow ones. And then you can have two batches of all five. And then you've used up two of each color. So now you have four green, zero orange, zero purple, zero red, and one yellow. So you can't have any batches of all uh, of four colors. You can't have any batches of three colors. You can have one handful that contains the last remaining yellow Skittle, uh, along with one of the remaining four green Skittles. And then you have to eat one green Skittle three times. This problem is kind of nice because the sample input actually is described and explained in the problem description. So when we look at the input and output, um, it's always kind of nice to look at the sample input and sample output as you're doing so to kind of understand where the data is coming from. In this case, we see that the input is a single line with a single string that represents all of the Skittles in the bag that Megan plans to eat. So we have R O Y G P representing red, orange, yellow, green, and purple. And we have potentially up to a million Skittles. So that's like a lot of Skittles. Also, the string is not necessarily sorted, which means that we don't have all the reds in, in the same order and all the greens in the same. Uh, we have them distributed out, just kind of like a normal bag of Skittles. And that all makes sense. We have uh, definitely not sorted string here. It's one string, one line. Let's now look at the output. The output is going to be an integer and a string for each line. And we have five different lines. The integer is going to represent how many batches of the given size can be eaten. And the string represents the colors present in each batch of that size. Okay, so basically, we have two batches of all five colors, one batch of yellow and green, and then three batches of only green. Batches is the same thing as handful, effectively. Now, we need to determine which line represents which. It kind of makes sense from this output. This one's going to be how many batches of size five, then four, then three, then two, then one, because that's what our example is. But let's dissect this sentence here. It has a little bit of math that makes it slightly difficult to parse. And whenever you see this, uh, the easiest way to figure out what it's actually saying is to go through and see that the first line is going to correspond with a 1 here. So 1 minus 1 is 0. And then we just have 5. So this one is how many batches of size 5. And then let's try the last line here. It's the fifth line. 5 minus 1 is 4. So 5 minus 4 is 1. So this is how many batches of size 1 Megan can eat. This problem is nice because it has a description of what this sentence is saying. It says that the lines are basically sorted by batch size descending. But this isn't always given to you in competition in these problems. Sometimes you'll just get this sentence without the clarification sentence, and you have to be able to parse this. And I definitely recommend that you try first trying the first line, for, then the last line, you know, try the bounds, figure out what that is, and then kind of infer the middle from that. 
Lastly, the colors have to be output in this specific order. So we have R is going to go first, then O, then Y, then G, then P. And then we kind of notice we have Y and G uh, because Y goes before G. So now we understand the output. Let's now figure out how to solve this problem. And to do that, let's use the example that's listed up here. And I've just copied over to here the list of all the colors as well as how many of them we have. Now, let's figure out how we can determine how many batches of each size we can create. Let's just kind of work through if we eat if we can eat one batch of size 5. We have at least one of every color, so we can. And then we'll end up with five greens, one orange, one purple, one red, and two yellows. And then that's one batch. We can do that again and get four, zero, 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 and one. Another batch. At this point, we can't have any more batches of five. So these are going to be, I'm going to annotate these with a five to indicate that these bat were batches of five. Now, at this point, we see that she can eat a batch of size two with one of these ones and one of these fours. So this will go to zero. This is staying at zero, zero, zero. And this will go down to three. And we see that that is a batch of size two. And then at this point, we have uh, three, and that'll um, be three batches of size one. So we'll just have that go down to two, and then there will be a batch of size one. All the rest will be zeros. Then we have a, si a bat, this will become one, and then zero finally. And there's one more batch of one, and one more batch of one. Now this seems to be correct. This is giving us that we have five batches of G, O, P, R, Y. Then we have zero batches of four, zero batches of three. We have one batch of two, and those two are going to be Y and G. Then we have three batches of one, which is just G. Okay, so this sounds good. And I just realized I made a slight mistake down here. This should be a two. But we need to figure out how to actually calculate these numbers here, this two, one, and three. We can see it visually. But we need to translate that to a program. And what we'll note is that we have these kind of transition spots. There's a transition here and a transition here. And in these transitions, we go from, for example, five down to two, and then two down to one. And that is the key here. There's two elements before the tra this transition, one element here, and three elements here. And that's giving us our two, one, and three down below. And we can also think of having a couple of extra implicit transitions in this area. So there's actually kind of like three transition periods right there that are hidden and that have zero in between them. All right, so now how do we calculate the size of each partition, each section between these transitions? What we'll note is that the key is the minimum value at the start of the block. So in this case, it's two. We have three things that are two, and that determines the size of this first transition. So how do we determine the size of this transition period here? Well, it's this one. This one determines how big this can be. Again, for this last transition, period, this last section, it's bounded by this three. This three determines how large that will be. Okay, so we know how to calculate the size of each one of these blocks, but how do we make sure that we take into account these extra little blocks in here that 
are size 0. One way of doing this is thinking of each one of these partitions as being associated with a batch size, as a handful size. So this first partition is associated with handfuls of size 5. This little sliver here is associated with handfuls of size 4. And then we have 3, 2, and 1. Now, at the end of the partition with handfuls of size 5, we don't have enough to do any handfuls of size 4. And the way that we know that we don't have enough is there are only two non-zero numbers right here. At the end of that, we know that we don't have any ability to do handfuls of size 3 because there are, again, only two non-zero colors. However, we are able to do some batches of size 2 because there are two non-zero numbers corresponding to two different colors. And again, we have one non-zero number here, which means that we can have that number of handfuls of size 1. So now we have to figure out a way to store this information in our program. That way then we can determine what the minimum here is and determine which values are running out and also determine how many are going to be running out at each transition period. And to do this we're going to use a data structure called a dictionary. And a dictionary is a fairly simple data structure that involves a key and a value. And it's kind of like an array in that you can index into your dictionary, but instead of using a number, you'll use this key, which could be basically anything. And then it gives you back a value. So in this case, our keys are going to be our colors, and our values are going to be how many of that color are left in our bag of Skittles. Okay, so let's read this in to a dictionary. Dictionaries in Python are squirrely braces. And let's just call this our color count. And we're going to initialize this with our input. We have one line of input, and we're going to iterate through the characters of that line. For each character, we need to update our dictionary and add one to the value corresponding to the color that we see. So here, color count at character is going to be plus equal one. Now this won't work because color count of character may not exist yet. So we'll add a check for that. This way, we'll always set it to zero before we try and add one. All right, let's do a sanity check and print out our color count map. And when we run this, I'll go grab our sample input from here. We get two red, three yellow, six green, two purple, and two orange, which perfectly corresponds to the example that's given, which is also the sample input. So that's good. Okay, now we've read in the data, the next thing that we need to do is implement the algorithm that we discussed earlier. And if you recall, there are basically five different partitions. One partition here is for the batches of five, the batches of four, the batches of three, two, and then one. And this number of batches won't ever change. We'll always have five, which sounds like a for loop to me. Now, it's going to be easiest for us to go from five, four, three, two, one, go backwards. So let's do that. What this will do is iterate from five down to zero backwards. Remember that in Python, the second parameter is not inclusive. All right. So inside of this for loop, we need to determine how many batches of that size can be eaten. 
And what's the criteria for a batch of a given size? Well, the first criteria is that we have to have at least that many non-zero digits. So in this case, there's five non-zero digits, but at this partition here, we only have two non-zero digits, so we can't have any batches of size four or of size three. We can of size two because there are two non-zero digits. So let's figure out how many non-zero digits there are in this dictionary. And I'm going to do this in a very not Pythonic way. This is not very quote unquote good Python, but this will show you a little bit better how this might be implemented in another language. So I'm going to iterate through all of the values of the dictionary. And for each value, if it's greater than zero, I'm going to add to the number of non-zero digits. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so now let's remember what condition we're trying to test for. We're trying to test if the number of non-zero digits is the same as i. If it's not, then we don't have enough Skittles to eat for that batch size. So we can check if the number of non-zero digits equals i, then in this case, we actually have enough Skittles to eat. Now, what about the other case where we don't have enough Skittles? In that case, we're supposed to output zero so if we look back over here, in the cases where we aren't able to eat a batch of Skittles of that size, so of four and of three respectively, we just output zero. So it's going to be easiest if we reverse our conditional and say if it is not equal to i, so this means that it's, it's less than i, then what we're going to do is just output zero. And we have to be careful here. We have to continue and not go on to the rest of the code. So now this is not enough Skittles. OK, so if we pass this if statement, we know that we have enough Skittles to eat at least one batch. So we need to figure out how many batches we can actually have. And to do that, Let's go back to our drawing. You'll recall that we take the minimum value that's greater than zero, and that's going to determine how big our block size is, our, um, our partition size is. So in this case, two was the minimum, which meant that there were two batches of five. Here, one was the minimum, which meant there was one batch of two. Three was the minimum, which meant there are three batches of one. So let's go over to our code, and when we're iterating over the values, let's also store which one the minimum is. And we're going to do that up here. And I'm going to set this to an absurdly large number, just to make sure that on the first iteration, we always have a lower number than this here when we do the minimization in the for loop. And if v is greater than zero, and if the v is less than the current min value, then we're going to set the min value to the value. Now, in addition to keeping track of how many batches we're going to have, we also have to keep track of what colors we have. So if we go back over here, we have to keep track of the fact that in this case, for example, with the batches of size two, these two, Y and G, are the values, the colors that we have. So to do this, we're going to change our for loop again. And instead of iterating over the values, we're going to iterate over both the keys and the values. So we get this data and this data in our for loop. So right here, we want to iterate through both the key and the value, and we have to change this from values to items. 
Now we want to store which colors we have seen. So we're going to do that in a set up here. So what is a set? Well, a set is just a unique collection of values. So unlike a list where you can have multiples of the same thing, sets don't have that. If you add something twice into a set, only one copy will exist in that set. Okay, so in our for loop, if the value is greater than zero, then it means that we can eat this color of Skittles. So we should include that color in our included colors set. And we're going to add the key, not the value, because the key represents our color. Okay, so now we have to determine how many batches of this size we can eat. And in fact, we already have this data. It's this min value greater than zero number. So let's print it out. And let's also print out the included colors. And we'll save this and run it. And we'll use our input. Cool, we were able to eat two batches of all five colors. But wait, we don't have any batches of these sizes. Well, that's because we forgot to actually eat the Skittles down here. So let's do that. We're going to iterate through color count again. But this time we're only going to use the keys because we're going to use that key to index into our dictionary as we're iterating through it and edit it as we go. And what we're going to do on each of these keys is subtract the number of Skittles that we've eaten. So now this is effectively eating min value greater than zero Skittles from each of the colors. You might notice that this may cause some of these to go negative, but that's okay because we have v greater than zero as a guard up here. So even if it goes into a negative Skittles, we won't ever include that in our colors. So let's save and run this again. Cool, we get output that looks correct, except for this, which we need to format. So we have two, zero, zero, one, and three. And if we go back to our problem description, we notice that we have two, zero, zero, one, and three. So the first number is correct. Now we have to solve for sorting the output in, a, in the correct order. So we'll copy this string here and we'll use that to help us sort. And here we're going to construct our string. And there are many ways of doing this. I'm going to use the sort function in Python and then use a string join to join those together. So first, I'm going to set included colors string to sorted include colors. Now, this will sort it alphabetically, but we don't want that. Notice we have R-O-Y-G-P, that's definitely not alphabetical. So we're going to add a key parameter. And the key is basically a function which will determine a number from the actual value. And those numbers will then be used to sort those values. In my case, I'm going to make it a lambda function. And the output of this function will just be the index of the character of the color in our string. So for example, if C is Y, then the index of C in this string will be two, which will be the number that the sorted function uses to determine where to put that color. Now sorted will return basically a list. It's a little bit more complicated. It's a generator, but it's basically a list. So we need to join it together. And Python has a little bit funky string joining. We put the string before the dot join. And then we need to modify the print statement to print out the correct value. 
Okay, let's test this out. We'll run the program and use our sample input. And cool, R-O-Y-G-P, that is the correct order, Y-G, and then G. Let's go check this on the sample input. R-O-Y-G-P, Y-G, and G. Excellent, it looks like we did it. At this point, we should try a few of our own sample inputs just to make sure that we haven't missed anything. And a good test case is this bound here, this one and one million. One million is gonna be hard to test, but let's test with just one Skittle. So let's do R. Excellent, we weren't able to eat any groups of five, any batches of four, any batches of three, two, but we were able to eat just a single batch of one red Skittle. That looks good. Now, let's make sure that our sorting is working properly. And the way that we're gonna do this is by doing the reverse of this string. So, P-G-Y-O-R. This should have one single batch of five with all five colors, except for sort of the exact opposite direction as this. And it is, R-O-Y-G-P. Okay, let's see if this works. Excellent, it worked. Thanks for watching to this point. Now that you're here, I'll tell you a secret. When I did this the first time, I didn't make this number big enough. I only made it 2 to the 10, which is 1,024, which is not big enough for the bound, because the bound can go up to 200,000 batches of a given size. So I ended up having to go and edit this. If you go back and look at the video, you might be able to tell. Don't tell anybody that secret, though.